It was a gruesome murder. A young woman tied up, her body tossed at the side of a road. And while police know how she died, two big questions remain. Who was her killer? And most importantly, who is the victim? Michelle Sagone is back now with more on Woodlawn Jane Doe. Matt, it's been a troubling murder mystery in the Baltimore area for nearly 40 years. But now a breakthrough new technology might finally give this innocent face a name. She's known only as Woodlawn Jane Doe, a young woman in her late teens or early 20s, who in 1976 suffered a gruesome fate. Given the way her body was found, the fact that her hands were bound, her feet may have been bound, the rope was tied around her neck, this was a brutal, brutal murder. For me, nobody deserves to die like this. For 30 years, Baltimore County investigators circulated Jane's photo nationwide and made countless pleas for the public's help. Yet no help came until now. Recently, the Border Patrol uh, contacted us and they offered to do pollen analysis on her clothing that she was wearing at the time her body was found. They didn't know about DNA back in 1976, so a lot of times items were often not stored properly. We were lucky in this case that almost every item still had an intact package. The test hit pay dirt, identifying a unique combination of hemlock and cedar. They were able to pinpoint these two pollens together at only two locations. One was the New York Botanical Garden, the other was Harvard University in Boston. Based on the other evidence available in the case, it is believed the victim actually was in the Boston area prior to coming to Maryland. Now that Detective Dave Jacoby knows where to look, he needs to know what to look for. Enter forensic artist Evelyn Grant, a specialist at bringing the dead back to life. When everything else fails, that's when the forensic artist comes in. On the field, I've done several hundred investigations. I would probably say maybe a third, 20% of the cases have been a result directly from the forensic art. When I worked on the Woodlawn Jane Doe case, he explained the basics, you know, what, what the case involved, and then asked if I could take the morgue photograph, clean it up enough that we can produce an image of her, a likeness so we can air it. When I'm working on the photographs, I, I do think about why are they missing? Why, why isn't somebody looking for them? What did they go through, you know, to be on my desk? It, it's sad. You have this, and it slowly goes with the creation to make sure all the features are lined up into the image of the final outcome. Grant's work produces an astonishing and vivid photograph. Once this photograph is complete and we're happy with the outcome of the, how Jane Doe looks, we're gonna do an age regression of her. And of course, the purpose of that is if she is a runaway or she's not from the area, maybe somebody knew her at a younger time. So now I wanna make her look younger. With children, they tend to have a larger eye look because the eyes don't change in life. They grow into their features. By the time I get to the end, this is still her with the age regression look. And that's pretty much how she's gonna look at a younger age. Scientific data that pinpoints where she was from, new photographs of what she looked like at the time of her death and as a child. All Jane needs now is your help. Somebody must know who this young woman is. Somebody must remember her. I couldn't imagine missing a daughter or sister not knowing where they are. If the right person would just call us, not only can we identify her, we have a really, really good chance of solving this case. Someone out there knows who this woman is, and here are the five clues that we hope will solve this mystery. First, these photos of what she looked like before and at the time of her murder. Number two, we know she once lived in or around Boston before moving to Maryland. Number three, she was wearing this necklace. Four, she was drugged with a powerful sedative used in psychiatric hospitals. And five, the sheet she was wrapped in was commonly found in institutions. If you have any information on this case, go to crimewatchdaily.com.